Welcome back and get ready to engage your left hand and your right foot. We're going to focus on the left hand today and we'll learn a left hand bass line and we'll start reading the notes on the left hand's bass clef. We'll also take a look at how to best use the sustain pedal. Let's get started with a five finger exercise, this time with the left hand. Before we do that, let's stretch out that left hand a bit. So let's do our stretching exercise where we take the wrist back, pulling back on the fingers gently. And then we'll go down with the hand and do the same thing until we feel the stretch. One more time going back the other way. And then down. Now we'll do our steeple stretch, going to each side of every finger, starting with the index finger. Now let's do that five finger exercise with the left hand. We're going to put it all the way down here in this position with the bottom note two octaves below middle C and the five fingers over the five notes above that C. So we'll start by playing these notes slowly up and down. And remember to keep the hand slightly cupped and curved this way, and the fingers arched a bit like this. So we'll play it slowly, up, and then down. I'll count us in and let's play one note per beat. One, two, three, four. And play it again. Now let's try that just a bit faster. One, two, three, four. Now we're going to work on our When the Saints Go Marching In bass line. And before we do, let's review the three shapes of the bass line. The first one uses fingers 3, 2, and 1 on this shape. The next one uses the same shape with a G on top, same three fingers. And then the other one in the sequence uses a same shape with F on top. And let's review the rhythm of the bass line. It goes like this. One, two, three, four. Rest. 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 Let's try clapping that together. One, two, three, four. Rest. 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 So we start with this bass line on C. One, two, three, four. C. Rest. Rest. Down to G. Back up to C. Down to F. Back up to C. C twice, G twice, and then back to C. So let's try that bass line again through the tune. This time we'll do it at 80 beats a minute. So the rhythm is. And you want to get that rhythm going in your head in time with the pulse of the metronome before you start so you know where to place the bass line. Rest. Rest. One, two, one, two, three, play. Rest. Rest. Down to G. Up to C. Down to F. Back to C. C, G, G, C. 
Now remember, if at any time you have trouble getting from one chord to the next, isolate the point where you change chords and revisit the fingering and the move from one chord to the next. Also, slow that tempo down whenever you need to. Remember the practice motto, slow it down and break it down. Also, remember when you're playing this bass line that you're making a claw with your hand with that fingering. And you're moving that claw to each chord change. So as you move from chord to chord, you're moving the whole hand into the new position. Now let's try that When the Saints Go Marching In bass line, and I'll play the melody while you play the bass line. We're back on 80 beats a minute on the metronome, and I'll count us in. One, two, three. Now let's try that same bass line in our left hand, and I'll play some rhythm chords along with it. One, two, three, four. Now let's try playing the When the Saints Go Marching In melody, this time in our left hand. Last time we played it in the right hand. So we're going to play it this time with the left hand with a different fingering. We're going to play it right here. It's almost like a five finger exercise with the left hand because all five notes fit in this one hand position. So let's try this When the Saints Go Marching in melody with the left hand and I'll count us in. One, two, three. Two, three. Two, three. Two, three. Two, three. You'll notice that for most of us, it's a little bit harder to play that with the left hand if we're right-handed. But give your left hand time, and you'll develop the dexterity you need in it. You'll definitely want to play this left-hand melody to win the Saints, and also that left-hand bass line to win the Saints with that play-along CD with the great band and the second-line rhythm on the snare drum. So now let's work on reading the bass clef. And remember that the notes on the lines of the bass clef are... G, B, D, F, and A, which we can remember through the phrase, good boys do fine always. So let's do an exercise now where a note comes up on the staff on the bass clef and try to name that note, and then I'll tell you what it is and we'll play it. Here's the first note. That's a D. You find that right there on the piano. And this note. That's a G. Now try to name this note. That would be an A. And now this one. That's a B. And finally this note. And that's an F. Now let's check out the bass clef spaces. And remember that the notes on the spaces of the bass clef are starting from the bottom up, A, C, E, and G. Try to name these notes when they come up on the screen. Here's the first one. That's an E. And here's the next one. You were right if you said that's an A. 
Now this note, which is a G. And the final note is a C. Now let's review our ledger lines of the bass clef a little bit. Check out this note and see if you can name it. That's a middle C. And this note below the staff, that's an E. And then we'll review a couple of our ledger spaces. Check out this space below the bass clef and see if you can name it. That's an F. And then this note is a B. Now let's take that C triad that we learned with its bottom note on middle C. And we're going to put the pedal down and stack these C triads all the way up and back down the piano. So we play it, put the pedal down, stack the triads. And hear how the triads all ring together. Now let's do the same thing with an F triad. Now we'll do the same thing with the G triad. And then back to a C triad. Now we'll stack some left hand notes down and then back up the piano, starting on middle C with the third finger of the left hand. And we're going to go all the way down the piano playing all the C's down and back up with the third finger while holding the pedal down. So let's play all these C's down and then back up the piano with the left hand's third finger while holding the pedal down. Middle C, down an octave, down another octave, and then back up. And hear how all the notes ring together. Let's do that one more time. Middle C, pedal goes down, Now let's go back to our first chord progression and we'll use that progression to work on using the sustain pedal. But first, check out the chords to this progression the way they're written here. There's something that we haven't dealt with yet called repeat signs. When you have a repeat sign, everything that's within those brackets that have those two little dots inside of them is repeated one time. So this progression gets repeated and then we're outside of the brackets and we resolve on a C chord. Also remember this nugget about the sustain pedal. You want to develop an awareness of when you're using the sustain pedal and you want to practice without it unless the thing that you're practicing really needs it and change the pedal often when you do use it. So let's try that first chord progression with the pedal down. And remember, we're going to change the pedal every time the chord changes. So when we're playing this first chord progression, I'm going to do it slowly to show you how to use the pedal on it. We're going to play these first four chords. And on the fourth one, we take the pedal off and change it to play these next set of chords, and then change it again to get back to the original chords. We change it here on beat four back down for these chords and we change it again for the last chord. So let's try that together in quarter notes. One, two, three, four. Pedal down and change it. Change it again and change it again. change it one more time for the last chord. Let's try that first chord progression in its broken up form. So 
So let's play it together. We'll play the progression twice and then resolve it. And we're going to change the pedal again on beat four of each measure. One, two, three, four. Pedals down. And change it. Change it again. Change it again. And change it one more time for the last chord. So that does it for our left hand and right foot session. And you're ready to move on when you can play all the bass line of When the Saints Go Marching In with a Steady Pulse. When you can name the lines and spaces of the bass clef staff. When you can change the pedal on the first chord progression when the chord changes without blurring the chord. In this workshop, we got started focusing on our left hand, and we'll be going back to that often neglected left hand throughout the course. We're also beginning to learn how to best use that sustain pedal and how not to overuse it. Keep working that left hand, and I'll see you next time.